When you watch a movie, how well can you understand the intention of the filmmaker? When you know a person, how accurate is your perception of who they really are? Ingmar Bergman's Persona is one of his most ambiguous and enigmatic films. It asks a lot of questions and offers few answers. The film opens on images of a projector at work. Accompanied by dissonant sounds, there's an almost violent quality to the presentation. This consists of a series of images and clips taken from early cinema. The emphasis is on camera effects and the use of film to generate misleading impressions or special effects. This sets our stage, and it's clear that Bergman wants us to be aware that what we are viewing is artificially constructed, that it has the potential to mislead us, perhaps to our harm. This is reinforced by the images of apparently dead bodies that are revealed simply to be sleeping human beings. Immediately after being reminded that cinema is illusion, we find ourselves duped by a new set of images. Bergman lets us know this is not acceptable. When the boy violates the fourth wall, our immediate impression is that he is acknowledging us, the audience. In fact, he is attempting to connect with the shifting image of a face, which at any moment may resemble either of our two leads. We are invited thereby to identify with them, and to identify them with one another, as separate from the boy, inaccessible and unknowable. The story concerns Alma, a nurse assigned to care for Elizabeth, a famous actress in the isolation of her psychiatrist's cabin. Elizabeth has had a kind of breakdown, suddenly unable to continue in the middle of a performance of Electra. Overwhelmed by the absurdity of performance, she shuts down, to the point where she has stopped speaking altogether. We then observe their relationship as it develops and changes, and we attempt to understand what can be inferred from this about some generally applicable truth in life. If we are they, then their interactions must have relevance to us. There are plenty of legitimate ways to interpret the film. A common and perhaps the most fruitful interpretation sees the two characters as iterations of one being. Presented with Elizabeth, a seeming blank slate, Alma begins to confide in her. Elizabeth responds with implacably bland smiles and a seeming casual interest. Lack of verbal response seems to invite further confidences, and soon enough Alma is revealing more of herself than she would normally feel at ease to do. She projects feelings of warmth and friendship onto Elizabeth, believing her to be a picture of compassion. She starts to imagine that Elizabeth possesses qualities that in fact originate in Alma herself. In the absence of contradiction, she looks at Elizabeth and sees herself. When she then intercepts a letter in which Elizabeth expresses amused contempt for her childishness, Alma feels betrayed. The affection that she had assumed to be mutual was not, and she's confronted by the idea that her idealized notion of Elizabeth as her friend was merely a projection of her own wishes. She enacts petty revenges upon Elizabeth in response, blaming her for Alma's own naivete. Oh. But Elizabeth never did betray Alma. She was never the loving friend Alma imagined her to be. It was entirely in Alma's imagining that Elizabeth was ever this bottomless pool of understanding and forgiveness. Elizabeth, in fact, is presented neutrally, or at best is demonstrating tolerant amusement. She was making efforts specifically to be no one, to shed her persona and to merely exist. Indeed, in the scene where Alma discusses Elizabeth's son, the latter expresses dismay at her own emotional inaccessibility and indifference. She despises her son and is strained by the necessary performance of her role as mother. The very nature of Elizabeth's problem is an inability to relate to those around her. In attempting to understand the film as presenting two aspects of a single person, one is confronted by their combined image. See how incongruous it is, how these two faces, each beautiful in isolation, become hideous when merged. The puzzle pieces don't fit, and to me the message here is not that Elizabeth and Alma are one, but that they are incapable of mutual understanding or identification. Alma came to see Elizabeth not as she was, but as Alma wished her to be, and this is something we all do in real life. We imagine that we know one another, all the while engaging largely in a game of projection. 
we do it even with characters we see on screen, and with the movie stars that play them. And when we discover something about a person we thought we knew that does not accord with our assessment, the false persona becomes exposed. We become unsettled or even angry with the person for not being who we wanted them to be. It is impossible, Bergman seems to assert, to truly know another person. And because of this, it is the more important for an artist such as he to make himself precisely understood. A film, like a persona, is a presentation. No matter what grammar is used, be it language or cinema, he is frustrated in his attempts to communicate to his audience what it is he actually means to express. On top of this, Bergman forbids the willing suspension of disbelief to become firmly established. Note how the narrative is periodically interrupted by further reminders that the story is artificial. This is a slap to the face for the audience. The implicit relationship between director and viewer is deliberately fractured. When Alma reveals that she has betrayed Elizabeth's confidence, the two are as disconnected as they can be. The sudden interruption reminds us that yet again we are failing to understand. We are watching a film, an artificial assembly of images and sounds designed to mislead. The disconnect between the women is thus duplicated in a disconnect between filmmaker and audience. Berkman also explores the effect of context, or lack thereof, on how an event or image is understood. When he shows us the monk's self-immolation in protest of the war in Vietnam, or the photo of Jews being expelled from the ghetto, it is within the limited framework of a television screen, or the frame of a photo. What these images mean, where our attention is focused, and how we understand them, depends both on the context provided and on the knowledge and understanding of the audience. In other words, the image is presented in a frame, and we have only the information contained within that frame as reference to understand its meaning. Except that we also bring to the viewing our own information from outside the context provided, and are therefore able to provide additional significance to the images. The flip side of this is that because we bring that additional information, we can never perceive the image simply for what it is as presented. The audience must interpret, and as such they can never receive the information as intended by the filmmaker who presented it. And if you can't perfectly communicate what you intend, then how can you ever possibly communicate who you are? You project a persona, and how that is received depends heavily on contextual elements. Like the images, a persona is perceived through the filters generated by the information the viewer brings to the table. When you interact with another person, their pre-existing perception of you will affect how they interpret your actions. The context of your relationship filters the elements of your actual personality, such that you may be completely misunderstood no matter how carefully you frame your behavior. And when that behavior clashes with the perceived persona, that construct in the mind of another person, it angers them because it's telling them that they are wrong. Wrong about you, wrong about how they perceive things and people, wrong about your identity and your relationship. The closer the relationship, the greater the feeling of betrayal when the inevitable discovery occurs, the discovery that you are not your persona. Alma's frustration increases as she discovers herself unable to identify with Elizabeth, nor to understand her, nor to understand even herself. Elizabeth's husband takes Alma for his wife. This reveals a limited depth to which he knows her, and he protests that it is the effort to understand that matters, not the understanding. Elizabeth has become incapable of pretense. She cannot love the child she sees as an alien thing. She cannot act a role knowing the distance between performance and substance. She cannot speak when to do so is a lie. Bergman, in turn, seems to be offering a plaintive protest with this film. He is lamenting his inability to make us understand what he's trying to say, and our inability to interpret without distortion what we are shown. Persona is a treatise about the necessary imperfection of communication in any form, and simultaneously an attempt to reach out despite that futility, in hopes of finding some kind of connection, something to save him from going the way of Elizabeth, of giving up altogether. In the end, Elizabeth seems to recover her ability to adopt a role, and the two are parted. Her realization that it is absurd to present a persona in the knowledge it must be necessarily false was born alone until Alma came to share her frustration. Perhaps that sharing was enough. We cannot know one another, and perhaps we cannot even know ourselves, but we share the bond of that limitation. 
Ultimately, Bergman cannot make us understand, but he can demonstrate to us that we don't understand. Or at least, that's what I have decided Persona is and is about. Thanks for watching. As always, please like, subscribe, share, and comment below. I'd love to hear your take on Persona, which may resemble mine in no way, yet still be completely legitimate. And if you don't like my take, shoot me.